Timothy Lynn Hollis was born in Birmingham on March 12, 1963. Known to peers and friends as Tim, he is the only child of longtime Bagley teacher and corner graduate Lynn Hollis and homemaker Kathleen Hollis of Dora. Growing up in an area with no siblings and no neighborhood children, our inductee says that he spent most of his young life entertaining himself, reading, writing, drawing, and putting on shows for his family. Tim said that he would build replicas of places he would travel with his family in the woods near his home, happily recreating the fantastic scenes of his youth in which he could play. Tim started to school at Bagley in 1969, and very quickly teachers recognized his aptitude for reading, writing, and creative spirit. At Bagley, his teachers would have him read and write stories and then act them out for classmates, sometimes using puppets to dramatize the story. It was in the fifth grade that Mrs. Ann Beasley really encouraged him to hone his skills as a writer and create stories about things that he loved. He wrote dozens of short fantasy stories inspired by classmates and illustrated the book himself. His writing, encouraged by his teachers and parents, came naturally according to his father. Inspired by the Wizard of Oz and Uncle Remus stories, Tim began to hone his craft and lay a foundation for a career in writing that lay ahead. At Bagley, classmates said he was considered the Walt Disney of the school because of his creative flair with story writing, storytelling, illustrations, playwriting, and performance of the tales. As he got older, Tim began sharing his work with younger students. As a freshman at Bagley, he would write plays for the elementary classes and did the same for students in the elementary school at Corner when he moved to Corner High School in 1977. That same year, people from outside the school hallways began to take notice of Tim's talents. Editor Dale Short of the Community News, a local newspaper serving Walker and Jefferson County, asked Tim to write and illustrate Weird World, a weekly comic strip that ran in the paper until 1983. In 1983, he launched a new series, Hillbilly Hares, a second strip that ran until 1986. Tim participated in the choir while at Corner and was a three-year member of the Drama Club under the leadership of English teacher Ava Fortner while he was a student there. Tim also had a love for history as a student at Corner. Growing up, he said he would read the encyclopedia to learn about people of the past and places that he had never visited. In his senior year as a student at Corner, he combined his writing and artistic talents to create a history project that won first place in the local district and state history competitions. And although he was a quiet student, he was known to come out of his shell when it came to the school drama productions. He says he never considered himself a great actor, but loved getting into character parts as he wrote and performed plays for the drama club at Corner. In his senior year, he wrote the Christmas play, The Story of Griselda, a production he adapted from a song that Rick Coggins' school choir would sing each year about a reindeer that nobody knows. As his high school career was coming to a close, Tim was named quietest in the who's who voting by his senior class. The talented student was also named as a member of the who's who among American high school students, a nationwide publication. After graduating from Corner High School in 1980, Tim studied mass communications at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. He graduated from UAB in 1984 and worked as a publication editor. Before leaving UAB, however, he served as a media and puppeteer assistant to television personality Cousin Cliff Holman during his personal appearances in the 1980s and upon his return to television in the 1990s. After editing the work of others, Hollis undertook the project of completing his own work, his first book, which was published in 1991. That book was a biography on Cousin Cliff, the man whom he watched on television growing up and with whom he had worked for several years as a colleague. Tim's love for regional storytelling, old-time radio and television and writing carried him across the South as he participated in dramatic pre-television radio productions of stories, like the Lum and Abner radio series as seen in this picture. But it was his love for writing that kept coming back to him. He says he had been researching the topics of the books he wanted to write since he was a child. 
His topics evolve from memories of his childhood. Dixie Before Disney is a nostalgic look at tourism in the South before the rise of the Disney destination vacations. Tim says his process for writing a book is very simple. It is like putting a big jigsaw puzzle together. You treat each chapter of the book as its own story that has to be researched. Then you try to pack as much into every paragraph as possible. Writing his 25 published books and getting them to publication has not always been an easy task for tonight's inductee. He started writing because he knew what he had to share was good. In the early days, it was a challenge to find a publisher, but he persisted. He continued to sell his ideas and was eventually told to find a college press who would look at the materials. After much work, the University Press of Mississippi sent a message to send his work and the rest is history. After the success of his first books, he has not been without a publisher since. Tim serves as his own agent, working with five different publishers and having as many as three deadlines at a time. Our distinguished author has books dealing with Alabama, Florida, Tennessee, and Georgia history, regional tourism and industry, amusement parks and entertainment venues, local television, and collectibles. His latest book, Tunes in Toyland, the story of cartoon character merchandising, is due in bookstores in the spring of 2015. When asked what subject he would love to work on in the future, Tim says that whatever it is, it will be something to which he can connect the present and the past. As we scroll through the titles he has written and published, it is easy to see our author has worked to help us reach back into our memory and share the journey with him. In addition to his hours of research, he uses photos and items from his extensive collection and his own family's travels. He said if he could give one piece of advice to the graduates in the class of 2014, it would be to find out who you are and never change who you are for anyone else's benefit. He also encourages you to find that thing about which you are passionate and make it your life's work. He says that he is very satisfied with his life's work. I am finally able to make people understand and enjoy what I have always loved and why I have always loved it. In thinking about his legacy as an author, he quotes Bob Hope, I don't care how they remember me as long as they don't say, who was he? In 2008, our guest decided that he wanted to do more than just share his fond memories of childhood and growing up in words. He began and continues to grow the Hollis Museum. Adding 4,200 square feet to his family home, Tim gathered and organized an amazing collection of items from pop culture that started with the things that he had in his home as a child. He says his parents never threw anything away, adding to his collection for the museum over the years by miles of travel and searching in antique stores and estate sales, Tim has gathered two stories of items from the 60s, 70s, and 80s that most of us remember but threw away or lost over time. Items include collectibles from local broadcasting, restaurants and retail, holidays, television and radio, tourist attractions, records, books, lunchboxes, toys, posters, and the list goes on and on. The museum has been the subject of numerous newspaper and magazine articles, web videos, and was looked at as a possible subject of an A&E documentary series from the producers of Biography and Food Wars. This author's love for his community, state, and the South as a whole has also led to his monthly contributions of writing, photographs, and research of the internet website Birmingham Rewound, a fascinating site updated monthly to include a look back at the best of the history of Birmingham and its surrounding communities. For the past decade, Hollis has found the opportunity to return to where it all began, as it were. When time permits, he enjoys lecturing to elementary school groups about writing, telling the youngsters about some of the stories and characters he created when he was their age. The positive response to this has been extremely gratifying to him, to say the least. The unusual thing is that he not only explains to kids how he came up with so many oddball ideas, but he also draws the characters and performs their voices. As an artist, historian, speaker, author, collector, museum curator, and web contributor, Tim Hollis has proven to be an outstanding corner alumnus. His work continues to allow generations of men and women from the South the opportunity to step back in time and remember what was great about growing up, living, and learning in the Southeast. He continues to preserve pop culture and Southern history for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I present to you a member of the Corner High School Alumni Association Hall of Fame Class of 2014, Mr. Tim Hollis.